Hello everybody, Chris Gethin here, and uh, I am filming this video today to address the, the post that uh, my client, Riddick Roshan, put up a couple of days ago, showing his five-week transformation. Actually, it was yesterday. Five-week transformation. And uh, even though there was a lot of support, there's a lot of encouragement, a lot of positivity surrounding it, um, there's also some negativity um and there was a little bit of concern there that i thought you know what i want to address this and i put want to put it straight because believe it or not i've actually had people come up to me in the gym and say <laughs> knowing that i'm his trainer and say there's no way that he could do that naturally there's no way he could achieve the physique that he has without being on a shitload of steroids and uh it's very, very unfortunate that people live under such short ceilings because I wonder what these people could possibly achieve in their life if they had a little bit of faith of what can be achieved when you apply yourself, like not just, okay, I'm gonna show up, but apply yourself like your life depends on it. Now, we all think that we train hard, but the reality is, and I've been in the industry for about 28 years now, I'd say about 99%, if not more, of the people that I witness who believe that they train hard, don't. Less than 1% do. Their perception tells them that they do. They think they diet well, they think they're following everything to a T. They really think and they believe it, and they really, really don't. What you see with Riddick Roshan inside those five weeks is somebody who applied himself, but with the amount of desperation that you have to breathe. If you're put underneath the water and somebody is holding your head underneath and you are so desperate to get up and breathe, that's the desperation that Riddick has when he applies himself to a goal. He knows that there's a lot of people watching him. He knows that there's a, a lot of people that will be inspired. But more than anything, it's the drive inside himself that pushes him to these extremes. Now, does he have great genetics? Sure he does. He's got very full muscle bellies, very small, very, very small frame, which is a help and a hindrance because from aesthetic purposes, um, a little bit of muscle looks like a huge amount of muscle on his frame, but the negatives are that uh, he can succumb to a lot of injuries very, very easily and uh, deal with a lot of connective tissue uh, problems such as tendons, ligaments, stuff like that. So he has to be very, very careful. Um, but, you know, I, I noticed some of the comments and I actually posted, what would you like me to address? And someone said, it's impossible for him to attain these types of results within five weeks without taking a shitload of steroids. Um, so not, not taking anything away from Riddick. He did an amazing transformation. I can only assume that you didn't see my video series, Four Weeks to Shred where I got shredded in four weeks. And I'm assuming a lot of these people that are making these comments are uneducated or have never been to a natural bodybuilding show. So I competed drug-free uh, all my career. And uh, my very last show that I competed in, I was 186 pounds. I probably could have competed at 190, but I had to make a weight category. So let's say 190, and I continue to put, that was 2000 and, uh, 2009 was my last show. I've continued to put on a lot of muscle since then. On average, about half a pound of muscle uh, nearly every year. And um, I'm five foot eight. Let's say if I, I was to get sh absolutely shredded, absolutely shredded to the bone now at 190 pounds, let's just say. I'd probably be a little bit heavier, but let's just say 190 pounds at five foot eight. Riddick is at least five foot ten. I'd say maybe five ten and a half, five eleven. I know he's a lot taller than me, I can tell you that. When he gets absolutely shredded before he fills out, he gets down to about uh, 68 kilos. So what's that in pounds? Someone do the math here uh, because he weighs in kilos, I weigh in pounds. Uh, but it's not much. Let's say it's a hundred, let's, let's even say it's 180 pounds. I know it's less than that, but let's say it's 180 pounds. That's still 10 pounds less than me, at least minimum. Cause I'm, 
I'd say I'd probably be leaner at a, a heavier body weight. And I'm five foot eight. He's taller than me as well and weighs much less. So you do the math, <laughs> you know? What the physique that he has is very achievable for everybody, for everybody. And people say, oh, he must have been taking a lot of steroids. Even people that say he must have been taking a lot of supplements. Supplements, I say, equate to about 3% of your overall goals. 3% maximum. It's your nutrition, going to bed early, making sure that you're meditating or in a parasympathetic state, which means that you're in a rest and digest state every single time that you're eating. You're not wolfing it down, you're not scrolling, you're not reading, you're not in conversation. You are in a rest and digest. You're putting your fork down between bites. Whatever you absorb is what matters. I don't care how much you eat. And people are asking how much uh, protein was eating. About 1.1 to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight of protein. That's how much he was uh, consuming. Um, of course, if he's going through a mass building uh, cycle, you know, we're trying to just put on size, then he'd be eating a little bit more protein. But this was just to maintain muscle, uh, if not build a little bit in the beginning, uh, whilst just shredding fat, just shredding fat. Now, keep in mind, like I said, he has good genetics. He never, ever, ever, ever misses a meal. Never, never. And when I say misses a meal, he doesn't miss his meal timing either. So he'll eat upon waking, then he'll eat within every three hours before uh, going to bed. And he doesn't miss a meal time. Everything is calculated and precise as you could possibly think and wish for. Um, let me see what else. Yeah, what was his diet and training? So basically, he'd spend about five days a week training, no more than an hour each session, weight training. Cardio, of course, we had to burn a lot of fat within that time. So there was different forms of cardio at different times of the day, but generally it was double cardio. And he was dancing a lot every single day as well. Get in a good 20,000 steps because he'd have to send me his HRV, his heart rate variability, his sleep score. So I wanted to know what was his REM, his deep, his uh, quality, what was his sleep quality, uh, what time he was going to bed, how long it took for him to go to sleep, all that sort of stuff, body temperature, everything. And uh, he's very precise. He's, he's spot on in what he does. Was he taking any fat burners? He was taking fat burning ingredients. So when I say ingredients, L-carnitine was the, for the most part, L-carnitine helps shuttle the fat into the mitochondria to be utilized as energy. And obviously he's getting older. He's the same age as me, 49 years old. So we got to do whatever we can to keep his glutathione levels up, which is his ant master antioxidant, his NAD levels up, which helps recycle micronutrients and macronutrients. And again, I'll, I keep stressing this. Doesn't matter how much food you eat, it's what you absorb. So you've got to make sure that you have very good gut health, good, um, a healthy microbiome, which helps with hormonal production. Now, luckily for, uh, for Riddick, he has exceptionally high, naturally high testosterone levels. He doesn't need to take <laughs> steroids. He has very, very healthy testosterone levels. I'd say knowing the numbers of his testosterone levels, he probably has the testosterone levels of somebody that's like 20, 25 years old. Um, very, very healthy. So, but keep in mind, he doesn't use microwaves. He doesn't uh, have plastics, you know, like Tupperware uh, plastics. He's not taking in phthalates. He's not putting anything artificial on his skin or anything like that, which are estrogenics. Estrogenics and his estrogen mimickers obviously can increase your estrogen levels and lower your testosterone levels. He doesn't do anything like that. He, he, everything's absolutely natural, even when it comes to the, like the skincare, hair product, uh, products and all that sort of stuff. So it may seem a little bit woo woo, like what I'm doing right now is earthing myself to take away a lot of inflammation that we are penetrated with during the day from non-native EMFs and Wi-Fi's, etc. He had to earth himself every day, twice a day during that transformation. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that I get my clients to do to achieve what people deem as unnatural, 
We have to do some unnatural things in the gym, train into absolute failure, and doing some things like this, which may seem a little bit woo-woo, making sure that you're getting sunlight in the morning or in the evening to get good vitamin D levels, because vitamin D isn't a vitamin, it is a hormone and helps with testosterone regulation as well. So anyway, I just wanted to put this to bed for all of those that have been asking, is Riddick uh, natural? Yes, he is. I don't have any horse in this race. Doesn't bother me what you think or not. I'm just giving you uh, what, I, what is my truth. And uh, I've been training Riddick since 2012. So 11 years now. I feel like uh, I know my client pretty well. Anyway, if you do have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them.